Welcome to BizTech's Enterprise Technology Show, where we feature tech companies that are innovating in the large enterprise space. Now, today we're going to be featuring a company in the graph database and analytics space. Now, Gartner describes graph as one of the most important data and analytics trends that will change business. And estimates the graph market will grow 100% annually from 2019 to 2022. Now, our featured company today is graph database company Tiger Graph from California, and its founder and CEO, Dr. Yu Chu. Dr. Yu Chu, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, Doctor, could you give us a quick overview of Tiger Graph's history and your journey as an entrepreneur when you started Tiger Graph after leaving Twitter? Yeah, uh, we started the company in the end of 2012. I actually started the company in my garage, in the house I, I rented in near San Francisco, in Millbury. And uh, we worked with a, a couple of friends, uh, give up everything, you know, all the stocks in Twitter pre-IPO. Twitter was super hot at the other time, only had like 600 people. Um, but I was so passionate about, about studying Tiger Graph to provide a general purpose, high performance distributed graph database for all kinds of industries. So it's kind of a cliche, you know, so, but that's how we started uh, about uh, eight years ago, yeah. Now walk us through specifically what Tiger Graph does. Uh, we are the provider of the best graph platforms. So customer use Tiger Graph to connect the data, analyze the data, and get the new insights. Customer use Tiger Graph to do a lot of use cases like uh, fraud detection, anti-money laundry, uh, supply chain management, customer journey, and all kinds of applications. Okay, so let's let's take a step back a little bit and talk about database technology uh, and its evolution. Now. I think most people are familiar with the, the relational database technology, and that's where we te database technology came really to the fore. Uh, mm -hmm. And then key value databases, and then now graph databases. Now, why do graph databases deliver superior outcomes? Right. I'm a database guy. I got my PhD in database. Right? I have been doing database for more than 20 years. So that's my background, that's what I really know about. So that's a great question. I think uh, mathematically speaking, relational base is more powerful than key value database or document base, right? Because, because if you use SQL, you can write uh, a lot of you know, uh, complex queries and solve a lot of problems. But if you use key value and the document database, they're scalable, they're cheaper, but uh, you have to code a lot of things in Java or other language, right? But the SQL on top of relational base, you can do a lot of uh, BI reporting. But uh, uh, talking about the graph, graph is even more powerful than relational model. Anything you can write in SQL, any problem you can express in SQL, you can solve them in graph database. But the other direction is not correct, right? Think about the famous page rank graph algorithm from Google, right? Mm -hmm. um, or like a customer clustering or community detection or shortest path, all those problems are native graph problems. A lot of them need the many iterations, right? Iteration after iteration until they kind of converge. So you cannot even describe naturally or easily or sometimes even impossible to describe them using SQL on top of relational database. So that's why graph is so appealing because mathematically uh, speaking, it's the most powerful uh, model, right? But in the past, nobody made it work. Nobody had a scalable enterprise quality graph database. So that's why, you know, a lot of people love the graph as a concept. They think the business problem can be naturally model those graph problem, like a supply chain, like a, uh, power grid, right? like a social network, like a lot of other problems. But the, before Tiger Graph, nobody had a scalable graph database. So that's why once Tiger Graph come out of stealth mode three years ago, you know, you see a lot of movement around the graph space, right? So yeah, back to the question, I think people always look at the new technology 
to solve problems which they could not solve before with old or maxi uh, technology. Okay, so let me, to help our audience understand your value proposition better and also the value of graph databases, maybe you can share some use cases as examples. And let me start with, say, I'm a bank yeah. and I want to do a customer 360. Yeah. How is a graph database better? Yeah, so th th actually we have a lot of bigger bank using TigerGraph. Seven out of the 10 largest financial institutions and banks globally are using TigerGraph. So they're using TigerGraph for many different use cases. Some use us for uh, anti-money laundering. Some use us for credit card uh, fraud detection. Some just use us to do compliance, right? So they're all really the two know your customer, right? So mm -hmm. back to the question, it's also related to customer journey, customer 360. So I just give one example. A lot of people say, ah, I, I don't have a social network. I don't have a lot of tables, right? How Graph can help me? Just think about the one table, transaction table, right? Mm -hmm. Account one, send the money to account two in this location, you know, using what a phone number or IP address, right? Just a single table, but you can, based on this table, you can draw a like a account transfer graph, right? Account one, transfer money to account two, you know, we, then account two, transfer money to account three, right? So you can see the depths could be 10, could be 100, right? Could be many, many hundreds, you know, steps between one account and another account. Then you can ask question, you know, account one send the money to account two. Is there any loop, right? The money coming back to account one directly or to some other accounts? that has a close relation, relationship with account one, right? Maybe, you know, uh, the, the money come back to account 10 and account one and account 10, you know, you know, have good relationship or close relationship. The relationship. Maybe they're family members or maybe they, they're owner of some company, those companies are in the same building or share the same phone number, or physical address, right? So mm -hmm. you, you can see using relation database, you cannot even write the queries to detect those type of relationships. Yes. So I just picked up two account, account number, but I can imagine you can put the people, right? You know, who, who is the owner? Who is the executive, right? You can put a supply chain, you know, relationship. Are there a group of companies, right? And some come to a bank to, to they want to get a loan, right? But you want to know, you know, finally, how this guy, how this company is related to other entities. Did the other entity actually default on some loans, right? Are bad entities. So you see, you know, even a single table, you can model the most graph, then you can do a lot of things you could not do before using relation database or key value databases. So, so far, um, which, which are the key industries that have adopted uh, your technologies? I would think the banks, obviously, as you said, very natural. Um, yes. Which other sectors have adopted it? Yeah, so uh, the second one I would say is related to digital transformation. Uh, for example, uh, could it be e-commerce recommendation, could it be other type of digital, digital business. So for example, AT&T using Tiger Graph, Nike's using Tiger Graph, Walmart, Walmart using Tiger Graph, right? And there are also other businesses that have a lot of digital data. Then the more data you have, you, know, you can store all the data, no problem, cheaply, quickly, right? Uh, efficiently. But the problem is how you can connect the data from the venue, from, from the insights of the data, right? So, so for those business in the digital transformation business, so they have data, you know, they have data ready, then of course it's so much easier for them to adopt a new technology like a graph. So Dr. Uh, according to Gartner Peer Insights, your competitors and alternatives include the likes of Neo4j, Cloudera, now as well as offerings from AWS, Microsoft, Google, and Oracle. So why would, what makes you special? Why should, if I was a bank or a telco, why would I choose Tiger Graph? Yeah, I think for one simple reason, you always want, want to choose the best technology. You want to always want to work with the best company, which is the biggest the future, right? So we, uh, when we started the company, for the first six years, we were on the stealth mode. We kept our heads down, built the, the graph database from the ground up for the best performance. We are the first and only scalable distributed graph database. You mentioned the Neo4j, the, 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 you know, they're doing one for job, doing the 
the marketing education. They started about 20 years ago. 20 years ago, there were no distributed system. There was no big data movement, right? So the architecture was old fashioned, single machine only, right? So when, when tech graph came out, nobody thought distributed graph database was possible, right? So people just, you know, heard, okay, yeah, you just buy a fancy big machine with more memory. You don't need to put every data in, in, in the graph database, right? Just, you know, you can get a lot of value out from a single machine. So people were conditioned to think, you know, distributed graph database is impossible, basically, right? Distributed database in any way is really difficult, right? That's why there's so many startups that are yeah. trying to beat up Oracle, right? Even just on the relation they said, but the graph is so random. Graph, graph can connect so many data points, that's the beauty. But also for the engineering, for the architecture design, it's so hard to make it distributed. So, so we spent the first six years on the stealth mode, building this product from the ground up, we use C++, C++ to optimize memory access, data compression, CPU cache mismatch, all those hard core engineering problems. So then we got, got out of stealth mode three, three, uh, about three years ago. Nobody heard about the type graph. We are not the first guy in the market. You know, we didn't have any good customer at all. And the uh, customer had no any reason to choose type graph. So we were fortunate to work with those biggest banks, right? And other customers in the, not just, not just healthcare company in the US, which is United Health Group, and other companies like Intuit, Visa. The only reason to choose type graph because they, they tried everything else. Nobody worked before, you know? So like those big banks, they have the best data scientists, right, teams. They have the best engineer teams. They, they have been doing, doing machine learning AI for, for many years, right? But they need a graph to connect the dots to improve the machine learning model. They didn't find any good tool before Tiger Graph. Now, once they heard about Tiger Graph, they tried. They, 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 they say we really can deliver the true promises of graph database. So get, they get excited. They took the risk. So that's why in the last three years, we built our reputation quickly and we were able to grow year after year, you know, really, really quickly. Now, uh, Dr. Shu, I've got to ask you, during that six years of being in stealth mode, how were you funded and how was your journey like? So we were, that's why we, we didn't grow really quickly. We didn't have a sales team, we didn't have a marketing team, we didn't have HR, it's all engineers, right? So we kept the cost low and we were growing slowly organically. We organically, we want to build the best product. So, you know, it, it, in the, in the world of technology and the product, the best technology and product company will win. So that's our belief, right? And also we did get a funding, we get a seed round, we get a series A, and then we also get a series B, yeah. So we did who get- are your, Who are your funders in the seed and the series A? Uh, our, our, our seed, uh, seed round investor was uh, Jerry Yang, Yahoo uh, yeah. founder. Oh, no, yeah. yeah, so he, he, uh, he has a firm called ME Cloud. He was an early believer of Tiger Graph. So he led the seed round with his, you know, other, other VCs around, you know, uh, in, the, in the Bay Area, including some of his friends and the co, you know, uh, co works from uh, Yahoo, right? So that's our seed round. Our Series A was led by Chimi uh, VC. Uh, they, so they, they, at the other time, we already have had a couple of customers in Asia, especially in China. So okay. we, it was easier for us to get the funding. And then our CSB was led by SIG. Now you, you probably heard about um, TikTok or Better Dance, right? So it's, mm -hmm. it's one of the biggest you know, success. So yep. SIG is, is a great uh, investor. And of course you heard about us recent news of uh, CSC. So That's was, right, you raised 105 million uh, in your Series C. Now that brings, I think your total funding to about 170 plus million to date. Yeah. What are you doing? You're coming up to Asia right now. You, you started off in China, but you've just about to set up offices in Singapore and Indonesia. So what's the strategy for growth in APEC? Right, so right. Uh, I, I also want to mention, our series C is the largest single round in the graph space for any company so far, right? And it's more than what the, the sum of whatever we raised in the past eight years. 
So you see the 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 the, the, the upgoing trend, right? So we are going. We already we just started the entity in Singapore. So we want to focus uh, on local operation. We want to give our local customers the best support. Next step, we are going to go to Japan. So we are just working on Japan uh, uh, operations right now, uh, and also. Yeah, so we also have fortunate to have Australia tax officer as our customer. So we see a big business opportunities uh, around the uh, Asian Pacific. And, and the same sort of industry, so uh, uh, healthcare, telco, uh, banking. Um, banking. How about governments? Go government so far, we're not, uh, uh, except the Australia tax officer, we don't have any government, government, government to work at all in Asia Pacific. But we do have some government work in Europe and uh, in uh, in US. For, for example, local the local county where we, we are in called uh, Santa Clara. Santa Clara County is using telegraph to manage a social social benefits program. We also have some government uh, project with uh, um, with uh, with uh, um, Ivory Coast in Africa. <laughs> so, oh, helping, uh, so we we are helping them to to fight uh, some. Kind, like uh, kidnapping use cases. So yeah, it's awesome. very interesting. So uh, I think uh, uh, with the success with the tax fraud use case uh, with uh, Australia, I think we can do more in, in Asia Pacific area. Yeah, I think actually we just started one project right now with, with one government in East Asia, yeah. uh -huh. East South Asia. And very and close to you actually. Very, very close. close, you can't mention it? I cannot mention that now. Yeah. But what is that project about? So it's about the tax fraud, right? You want to connect the people. You want to see, you know, yeah, if you look at the one, a, sing, a single person's tax record, everything's fine, right? But if you look at the man, multiple people, multiple business entity as together as, uh, you know, uh, collectively, but you have found the fraud, you can detect the fraud patterns. So that, that's the beautiful graph. Connect the dots give you new insights before you even know it, right? If you know the pattern, yeah. you can write a SQL query or write a Java code, right? Yes. On the graph, they can give you all kind of new information you, you, you could not even imagine before. So Dr. Su, I think you're going to have a lot of customers from Southeast Asian governments uh, uh, for your technology. I think that's, that's a, a use case that uh, I think is very relevant in this part of the world, especially when governments are looking to try to raise revenues right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, also Tanikam, uh, China Mobile, of course, is a huge telecom, telecommunication company in China, probably mm -hmm. the number one uh, globally, I guess. So they use Telegraph to detect the real-time fraud. They're not a kind of, this is kind of stay owned or, you know, public company. So, so we don't really think it's like a, 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 you know, like a government agency in some way, but the, actually they use Telegraph to fight real-time phone fraud. You know, there are many, many uh, bad guys, you know, professional groups. Some yep. of them are not even inside China at all, in other countries, in other regions. You yep. know, they take a phone numbers, you know, they, 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 you know, make people's life miserable. Some people even, you know, die because of they lose their life savings, right? So the China Mobile is using Telegraph to, to, you know, to detect the fraud in real time. Whenever, you know, I make a phone call to you, if I never called you before, there's a risk, right? So then yes. they use telegraph to give real time enabling. Is this normal phone call? Or is this uh, just like a sales phone call? Or it's just like, you know, you know, uh, really, really like a malicious phone call, right? Phishing phone call. So immediately they use telegraph to connect the dots. What's your relationship and my, between you and me, right? If I never called you before, you know, there's a risk. But we, I never called you before, but I, I called 10, friend, 10 friends of you, you know, right? They called you and you called back, right? Then you have good, good relationship, good stable group, right? Then the risk is much, much lower. So using yes. graph, we can connect all this information and give evidence, give confidence to tell, you know, the management, do you really need to look into this? Or, you know, right, like we give evidence. Before they have a graph, of course, they have some in-house solution. They bought from other solutions from other internet companies. But you look at this. Every day they have hundreds of millions of phone calls, right? Only like 100 the phone calls are really bad. So the first alarm is so high, nobody treats all those systems seriously. So it's like you don't have a system. 
But yeah. these type of graph dramatically increases the accuracy. It's got a lot of social benefit. So Dr. Xu, you are a domain expert. As you said, you're a database guy. What are the broad trends that are seen within the graph database and analytics landscape moving forward? Yeah, so it's still new. There's a lot of exciting movement. I would say number one in the cloud. Database, every database is going to be in the cloud, right? Cloud is the future. There's no difference for graph database. So type graph is on cloud already. We see, you know, big movement, you know, uh, in, in our own cloud. So that's number one. Number two is hardware accelerated graph analytics. So we are working with partners, hardware partners like Xenix, uh, the, the famous APGA company. Mm -hmm. They use, uh, they, they put some of the type of graph algorithms to the hardware, to the APGA. They are able to increase the performance by more than 100 times. Graph is really useful to help machine learning and AI algorithms, right? But this, those algorithms are typically complex, computationally intensive. So by using hardware like APGA, customer can get 100 times you know, performance improve. So that's huge. So I think more and more, uh, we're going to see more and more uh, progress on this direction, which is really exciting. Uh, actually, next month, April, we are going to have our second only industry, open industry graph plus AI conference. We're okay. going to announce another partnership with another big uh, hardware company. I see. So, so that, 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 that's the exciting direction. So the third thing I think is graph visualization, graph BI. If you look at the Tableau, Looker, or Microsoft Power BI, you know, it's super helpful to people who don't want to write a SQL, who yes. are not familiar with SQL, right? Same thing is going to happen to graph database. Before you have really scalable, powerful real-time graph engine does not make any sense to build a graph UI, graph BI tools, but not have graph had this scalable graph engine already. Last year, actually, we released our first uh, uh, product called the Visual Query Builder. It's intended to be the Tableau for graph database. So okay. through web browser, you can drag and drop and ask questions like this. Who graduated from this university, moved to this city, for example, in Singapore, and has a friend in San Francisco, work for the same company or for a different company. As you can see, it's like a tree pattern, right? Or yeah. sometimes like small graph. You cannot describe this at all in Tableau or Microsoft Power BI, right? So, but you can easily do this through a graph uh, UI. Then- Would, would a non-technical user be able to make these queries? Exactly, that's, that's what it's designed for, to help first-time users, business guys who have no knowledge about the graph database, Graph query language, graph, you know, they can just drag and drop, ask questions like I mentioned, right? And also, of course, even experienced data scientists, uh, engineers, they, they can also get help because it's so, so much quicker, faster to just click and drag and drop than writing a, a SQL like graph query, right? Yeah. Now, Dr. Su, it's been fascinating, but I've got to ask you one very uh, good question. It's the final question that we have for you. What are the key business lessons that you've learned in Tiger Graph's journey from your founding in 2020, uh, 2012 so far that you can share with other business leaders and entrepreneurs? Yeah, I, I, I learned a lot by actually working with our customers because Tiger Graph is a small company growing quickly, but those, we, we have been fortunate, fortunate enough to work with a lot of bigger customers, right? like the largest banks, healthcare company, Timecom, and also some other technology companies. So I think one thing I really learned is that uh, uh, they, they embrace new technology, they take risk. Uh, for example, when we got our stealth mode, nobody heard about the tech graph, right? Working with the tech graph has a lot of risk, but as they look at the technology, they did the benchmark, they did the pilot project, they, they, they leap of faith, you know, they choose tech graph. And then they got a lot of benefit from their business, right? They either saved us tens of millions of dollars because it reduced the fraud, or they improved the customer experience or happiness because it reduces the, the, you know, the, the, the issues for the customer, reduces the phone call time for the customer, or they just increase the new revenue because they, they can give, they can do upsell, they can connect the data 
points much better, right? So I, I think that none of them, you know, you have to take some risk, you have to embrace technology, but the return is going to be big, right? So personally on, and professionally and uh, on, on the economic side also. So uh, the other thing is totally related to this. The other nice thing is that, you know, they, they, they are really strong. Uh, when they make a decision, they always a question of do I buy or do I build? A lot of times those business leaders get a pushback with my engineer teams. Oh, I can build this, you know, you, you don't need to buy, right? I, I can do this in-house, you know. But, but sometimes uh, buying is, a, is much easier, much more efficient than, than building a house. But internally at Telegraph, for anything, if we can buy a service, we can buy a product. If it's not our core competence, we will buy it, right? So, so I've learned this from a lot of uh, good business leaders. So they, they make sound judgment, they look at the risk, they look at the return, they make hard decisions, but they also verify, right? But the return, the business return could be huge. Now, on that note, Dr. Zhu, thank you very much for taking the time to be on the show and to share your insights. Thanks for having me, really nice coming to you. Now, I'm Brian Fernandez, and I've been speaking to the founder and CEO of Tiger Graph, Dr. Yu Zhu, on Vistax's Enterprise Technology Show. Now, this video will be on our Facebook and LinkedIn site, as well as our website, www.vistax.asia. Please subscribe or like our various platforms.